Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And today might actually be a tough love day. You know me. I love to give you some tough love. Um, but it's love still. It's tough because I care. I care about you. I care about me. I care about the, these entrepreneurs and businesses. And we have to talk about the real stuff. You know, that's just, that's what we're here for, right? Um, you know, all the fluffy love and every inspiration and motivation and yes, rah, rah, you can do it. I'm all about that as well. I believe we all need a balance of both. Um, I call it like a slug and a hug, a punch, a slap and a kiss, maybe. Um, you need a hug. You need to realize where you are, what you're doing, how you're doing. Um, but you also need someone to love you enough to say, okay, enough is enough. What are you going to do about that? And y'all, I pick these topics and I say these things because I need this as much as y'all need this, right? I need this because there always becomes a point in business and life and relationships and jobs and everything where we need to have what we call like a come to Jesus talk, right? Like we literally need to be like, is this what I want to do? Is this what I should be doing? Is This is hard. It's a struggle. It's all the things. And there's multiple ways to deal with those emotions and those realities, especially if you're dealing with Amazon, uh, like most of us are. Um, there are days where we literally want to chuck our laptop out the window. And I joke about going to work at Starbucks. Like literally, that's like my line when I get so frustrated with Amazon. I'm like, I'm going to work at Starbucks. I can't do this anymore. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm pulling my hair out. And this is, um, you know, I'm calling this like lessons from friends, right? If you guys have, uh, most of you have probably seen an episode or two or maybe every single episode <laughs> of uh, friends from like the 90s or whatever. And it's kind of making a comeback and new generations are getting into friends and it's awesome. But um, as that being like a staple show in um, a lot of our lives, like, grow like in the 90s or whatever, when it was on. Um, one of the things that was Ross and Rachel, if you guys don't know um, about Friends, Ross and Rachel are this iconic couple that like have kind of always loved each other. They were in a relationship. They were always on a break. Then they were on a break and then they were in relationships with other people. And eventually they, you know, kind of end up together and loving one another and really being dedicated to one another. But there have been times where they kind of broke up and took a break and reevaluated and explored their other options. And, you know, I feel like there's some lessons in that for the rest of us. Yes, it's a silly show, um, you know, cliche when you're talking about that. But at the same time, it's like they're, 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 they look back and they joke about being on a break. We were on a break or we broke up for a time and then we were back together. Um, so I take that lightly, but at the same time, it, there's a lot of lessons when it comes to that. There's a lot of lessons in life and in business that we need to take from, we were on a break. You know what? I'm going to be the first one to tell you it's okay to be on a break. It's okay to take a break to figure out if this is right for you or not. A lot of times in life and in business, we start building something, we have passion, we have desire, and then we end up just going through the motions. We're like, okay, I know how to do this. I'm past the learning and excitement phase. I'm more in the maintaining phase or I'm in the, the successful phase. And you're, you could be really, really successful and still need a break. Um, and so this is something I just really want to talk about because there are certain things that we need to be aware of in all business. And there's there's ebbs and flows and stages. Gone are the days where people go to college and they get their first job out of college and they get their degree and they get their job and then they stay there for 40 years and they retire with a nice pension. I mean, it's 2022 and there's so many different opportunities. There's lots of shiny objects. There's lots of business opportunities, job opportunity, all kinds of opportunities. So with that can also cloud our judgment. And if we are tend to be, um, is, we're going to talk about differences between, you know, quitting and moving on and pivoting and taking breaks so that we can give ourselves the permission that we need to be our whole selves. Because our job our, whether you're an entrepreneur or you work a nine to five or you do both, does not define who you are. It's what you do. It's what tasks you check off your list every day. But it doesn't define who you are inside, who you are as a person, what you love and what you're passionate about and the people that you care about. 
And I think sometimes we take, we don't take the time to get a long, hard look at what that looks and feels like for us in life. I think that we don't take the time to take a break, to realize and ask ourselves some of these questions. So this is your tough love today. I'm going to push you, challenge you, love you enough to say the hard things about taking breaks and quitting and moving on and pivoting because I have a feeling that a lot of people might be feeling the same things that I've been feeling and it's permission to explore these options. Permission granted. You don't need anyone to give you permission, but I think sometimes our mind thinks that like, well, I, can I just do whatever I want? Well, no, we don't give ourselves permission to do that because we live in the what if stage. What if, what if, what if? Well, what if I just up and quit? What if I move on? What if I don't care about this anymore? Who's going to judge? Who's going to shame me or guilt me or any of these things into, into that? So it's something that just is worthy of saying out loud to ourselves, just worthy of listening to and letting it resonate and letting it hang out for a while so that you can figure out what to do with it. Because I think we all have these thoughts, especially when things get hard. But what pivoted me or pushed me or catapulted me, I guess, into really reevaluating all the things in my life, relationships, work, um, my businesses, my finances, my everything is a major health scare. And I think when we have a major health scare in our lives, whether it's ourselves or someone we're really close to, it really reveals what's super important to us. And at the end of the day, what what I realized with these health scares is that what's really, really important to me are, are my family members, my mom, my husband, my children, my family members around me, my friends and family are really, really important to me. Um, when I look at my business, that's really important to me too. I really feel like I was created to serve people, to help people, to coach and inspire and motivate and bring out the very best in the potential of people. It's like a special gift that I love to use and share with others. Um, but at the end of the day, there's people that get that first people that I care about the most. And having PTSD from a previous experience with um, a health scare, um, my losing my dad to cancer, um, really had me thinking about what's truly important with my time, my money, my energy, everything. And with the recent health scare and our family, you know, I'm not at liberty to give details at this moment. It's something that we're just keeping private at the time. But it is something that's that's around and aware and we're going through um, the processes for right now for for the health issues. But what it really has done is to show me what's really important. What would make you drop absolutely everything? Everything. What would make you not care about paying your mortgage because something else is actually more important than that? Could there actually be something more important than that? <laughs> The answer is yes, people to me, the humans that are in my life, the people that I care about and love the most are even more important than paying the mortgage. If I have to sleep in my car as long as I'm with the people I love, so be it. So those are the types of things that can kind of, whether it's happening to you internally or externally, um, whether you have been forced to reevaluate or not, <laughs> I am bringing that to the table for you today um, because I think we all whether it's a health scare or COVID made every, turned everybody's life upside down, right? We didn't expect that. We didn't expect all of the fallouts of that as well that we're all still living with. But it should, or maybe could, if we allow it to cause significant change in us for the better. There's no time like a crisis. There's no time like a traumatic experience or something that happens that is outside of your control to force you to reevaluate what's really important. And as we were going through and walking through this process of new health concerns and things like that, I really realized something that as entrepreneurs, and that this is hard stuff, guys, this is not like sunshines and rainbows and fluff and all that. Like I, I want to bring that to the table as well, but something that really can move us is the fact that 
entrepreneurs are actually replaceable. So if you think about that in your job, you know, a lot of people have this false sense of job security because they're like, oh, well, there's no one in the company that knows how to do what I do. So I'm irreplaceable. Y'all, even as entrepreneurs, we are replaceable. Someone else can do your job. Someone else can perform all the tasks that you perform. Someone else can create the things you're creating. Someone else can produce them. Someone else can earn the income doing what you're doing. There's also people that are better at it than you, most likely, out there. So we are, as entrepreneurs, replaceable. You know, scroll through your Instagram right now. And would you actually miss someone like me if I wasn't there anymore? There's plenty of other people to listen to. There's plenty of other people to follow. There's plenty of other people to motivate and inspire you. And if this person's gone, someone else will show up and take their place. It is a very noisy and crowded world. We are actually replaceable. But there's one place where you're not replaceable. One place. Your home. Your family. Your relationships. So people can do your job. People can, people can uh, make money and there's other people that can do the things you're doing. You could even hire out all the things, but you yourself to your family, whether you are a wife or a mom or a friend or an aunt or a dad or an uncle, that is where you're irreplaceable. That is where you bring the most to the table. I am replaceable everywhere except these four walls that I live in. And that was a big eye-opener for me to see everything that's replaceable. If I lost my house, I can get a new house eventually. I did that. Been there and done that. If you lose a job, you can find another job. But if you lose a person, it's not replaceable. And so that's like a gut check to be like, okay, we don't want to live in doom and gloom and wondering if people are going to die. Yeah, we're all going to die. Did you know that? (laughs) Spoiler alert. None of us make it to the end. We all die. Everyone dies. So, you know, this is not something that we're, you know, talking about. It's not supposed to be a Debbie Downer thing, but it is something that we need to really consider because it can help you live more free. And what I mean by that is when we are thinking about being replaceable, it's almost like you've got nothing to lose. Yeah, I'm totally replaceable, but not here, not in this house, not with these people. So when you start to see these things more clearly, it helps you live more free because you're free to make choices that aren't hindered by someone else's standard, by someone else's dream, by someone else's priority list. I got a glimpse we get to see a glimpse when, when tragedies happen or hard things happen or we're staring at death in the face. You can see the sense of urgency intensifies and things become more clear. It requires a deep evaluation of what's really important. And there are, there are things that could happen to you that could happen to any of us that will literally make you drop everything. It changes life completely. Things that you absolutely care about and are totally immersed in today could be wiped out tomorrow with something like a car accident. Unpredictable, random, just happens and it stops you on an absolute dime. When someone you love goes to a hospital and isn't, you know, they're not in critical condition, <laughs> last thing I'm thinking about is my business, Right? helps you evaluate what's truly important. And so, although sometimes these transitions or these challenges or these tragedies happen and force us to consider a change or a transition, sometimes we need to force it on ourselves. If you find yourself down and depressed and struggling and stressed out and all of these things, it's time to have an evaluation. I mean, let's be honest, when our bodies aren't doing what we want them to do or something is wrong or something's in pain or you're sick every day or nauseous or you have headaches 24-7, what's the first thing you do? You call your doctor and have an evaluation. You make an appointment and you say, something isn't right. How can you help me? What can you see that I don't see? 
And how can you make these headaches go away? Right? So sometimes we need to take that evaluation for ourselves. You know, you can get an appointment with almost anyone these days, except for yourself. Right? How about making an appointment with yourself? Our world is rapidly changing and like digital nomad lifestyle is very real. It's gone are the days where you're going to a job for 40 years and you retire, right? So shiny objects are everywhere. Opportunity is everywhere. Things are more prominent now than ever. With that in mind, are you in need of a break? Are you thinking about quitting? Are you thinking about moving on? Now, I think we've all had these thoughts at some point in our entrepreneurship journey, whether you've been doing entrepreneurship or Amazon or anything that you've been doing for a longer period of time, things get hard. And then our mind starts to feel that fight or flight mentality. So what stage do you find yourself in now? Let's define some of these because I think that whether you're you have a tragedy or you have something that brings these things to the table or you just have a curly-headed blonde like me challenging you and throwing it in your face for no no reason. <laughs> I'm here to challenge your thinking to help you define some of these things so you can understand where you might be in the current moment and what you can do about that. When you're in a tough spot, do you start looking for ways to escape rather than solve a problem? That is more of the quitting mentality. Are you are you just quitting? So let's let's talk about that. Quitting versus moving on versus pivoting versus um, taking a break. Okay. Quitting, walking away when things get hard, instead of working through to solve problems. Looking for ways to just escape and quit and walk away rather than looking to solve the problem. Do you tend to make excuses when things get hard? that turn into procrastination, that turn into then bigger problems that we've ignored? Do you find yourself only looking at the challenges in your business rather than the benefits that you reap? Have you found yourself throwing in the towel before you have made time to make a good decision and really evaluate what the best decision is? Quitting is an attitude, really. It says, I can't. It says it's impossible for me. It says it's not going to work. Quitting is, I tried that once and it didn't work. <laughs> that makes me laugh, to be honest, when I think about it. I tried that and it didn't work. <laughs> How many ways have you tried it? How many times have you tried it? Once? <laughs> I think about this. I know you guys, my cornhole references, right? Everyone like laughs at me because like I'm always talking about cornhole. It is one of the passions I have. It's like my therapy. Um, It's physical. You get to like throw something for as long as you want to at something. It's like, I don't know, it, it takes care of a lot of outlet for me. So I love it. But when I think about cornhole and think about how bad I was in the beginning, if I literally stopped after I threw one bag, it's like almost ridiculous for someone to say, oh, I'm not good at that because you threw a bag one time. If you threw a basketball for the first time and you didn't make it into the basket, you can't tell yourself, I'm terrible at basketball. Of course you are. You just started. I mean, is that ridiculous to think that you are going to walk in doing something for the first time and think you're going to be awesome at it? Let's be real. That doesn't happen. You might have some natural talent at some things. But to be honest, we're not hitting home runs the first time we try stuff. We're barely hitting the ball, striking out more than we're getting on base. You know, all my references from cornhole to baseball to basketball, whatever it is, it's relatable, y'all. When you try something for the first time, try it multiple different ways. Figure it out. But you only want to do that if it's something you actually care about. Which is why we're talking about this thing today, because I'm not asking you to figure out something you don't care about. Like, I literally could care less about being good at basketball. I don't really enjoy basketball. I don't want to run back and forth. I'm short. I can't reach the basket. And I'm really honestly not that coordinated. You asking me to run and bounce a ball and pivot and turn around and then shoot it like two more feet higher, five more feet higher than I am? No, thanks. 
just don't want to be good at basketball. Don't care about it. Cornhole, different. I wanted to be good at it. I was terrible at it in the beginning. I mean, absolutely bad, y'all. But I cared enough to be like, I want to get better at this. So I'm okay to be bad in the beginning. Even if it's bad in my backyard where no one's looking, <laughs> a less embarrassing bad, but still giving yourself permission in the beginning to not quit just because it's hard. It's going to be hard. You're new. <laughs> the end. Like, I don't know what, I don't know how to say that any other way, but quitting is an attitude. Quitting is a, I tried it once and it didn't work. Quitting is a, oh, you know, I gave that a shot for a little while, for a couple months, for a couple weeks, and it just wasn't for me. Like, how did you really know? How do you really know? Or it's impossible for me. It's great for everyone else that they can create bundles or create income online or write a book or do a podcast, but it, it's just not, it's not going to work for me. I'm not this. I'm not this. I'm not that. I'm not so-and-so. Just not going to work. That is the quitting attitude. And the quitting attitude brings regret, which y'all know if you've, if you're new around here, you should know this is my phrase. Failure is better than regret. Failure you can fix. You can try again. You can start over. You can pivot. You can uh, go at it in a different way. But regret is permanent. You can't undo what you didn't do. You can't go back and try it again. Regret is something you have to live with. So I'd rather have failure. I'd rather fall on my face 20 times than never try and wonder why. Quitting is an attitude that says, I can't, I won't, it's impossible, it'll never work. Quitting brings regret. Now moving on, pivoting, reevaluating what you want and what you love and what's important to you, that's a whole different thing. So let's talk about some signs that you might be ready to pivot and move on. Not quitting, like we just talked about. Quitting, making excuses when things are hard. I can't figure this out. It's just not going to work for me. I'm just giving up. I'm throwing in the towel because it's difficult and I don't want to be challenged versus moving on or taking a break and looking at whether or not it's time for a change. Signs that you might be ready to move on look something like this. Like maybe you're succeeding and you're working through problems and you're problem solving, but you're just kind of going through the motions. It's just like you get up every day and you really don't think about brushing your teeth. You just brush your teeth. You're not thinking as like a young toddler who's just learning how to brush their teeth that you need to go in a certain pattern and use toothpaste. And it's, it's just a no brainer. You know, we're so conditioned to brush our teeth that it's just natural just going through the motions. I don't have to think about it. I'm a very successful teeth brusher. <laughs> I don't have any cavities. I haven't had them in a long time. Okay, but just going through the motions. I'm not passionate about brushing my teeth. I'm just passionate about having a clean, fresh breath with nice teeth. So, <laughs> but th you see the idea there. So you're, you might be succeeding and you're just, you know exactly what you're doing. You might be solving some problems, but it's still kind of that going through the motions and you're no longer energized. If you're no longer energized by your work, something that you look forward to somehow, some way, it might be a time to start thinking about pivoting or making a change. Now, when I say pivoting or making a change, that doesn't mean that you're going to go from like an Amazon seller to working at Starbucks, like, <laughs> like I'm always joking about, but, but a change within your business. What needs to change? If you're approaching your everyday workday with a negative attitude right from the beginning, definitely time for a change. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I hate Monday. Monday's the worst because I have to go to work and all this stuff. And I'm thinking, I love Monday. I love the weekend too. I really do. I love to spend time with my family. I love doing things I love. I like doing things I love every day. And on weekends, I just don't do work that I love. I just do stuff that I love. And on, in the work week, I get to do things that I love like this right now. I get to create podcasts every single week and talk to you guys. It's therapy for me. I hope it's inspiring and helpful for you. That's why I keep doing it. But if you have a negative attitude right from the beginning, if I walked in today recording this podcast thinking no one's going to like it, everyone's going to hate it, people are going to unsubscribe, they're not going to listen to me anymore, I, they're tired of hearing me, like that's the vibe that's going to come through. 
if you're approaching your day already with a negative attitude full of problems, might be time for a change. It is time for a change. Another sign that you might be not being fulfilled in your job and it might need a change is is you're not operating in your zone of genius. In your zone of genius, which I didn't read the book, but there's a there's a book out there. I heard like some cliff notes about it, but like the what I understand in your zone of genius is what you love most and are best at. That is like operating in your zone of genius, not only something that you absolutely love, that you're really, really good at. Marrying those two together is your zone of genius. And that means we don't, that doesn't necessarily mean we don't do tasks that are not in that, but that should be the majority of what you're doing every single day because it's really hard to have that negative attitude. It's really hard to not be energized and motivated when you're doing something you love and that you're good at. We all love that, right? We like to succeed. We like to feel good and know that we're accomplishing something and that we're um, living up to our potential and our purpose. That feels amazing. And that's what most of us deep down truly desire. And if you can do what you love most and are the best at and get paid for that, that is like the trifecta of what we all, um, what I feel like most people want. Oh my gosh, I love my job. I get to get paid to do this. Insane. Right? So if you don't, if you're not operating in your zone of genius or worse, you don't know what your zone of genius is. You're just kind of going through the motions and you've started and stopped a million different businesses and you're floundering and um, ping ponging all over the place. I can help you with this. I don't say this often. A lot of people just um, have the assumption that my level of expertise is in Amazon and it absolutely is. But my real zone of genius is seeing the potential in people and helping them be the most successful versions of their self in business, aligning their passions with their giftedness. What are you good at and what do you love? Let's turn that into a money-making machine. I've done this for hundreds of people, even outside of Amazon. It's in you somewhere too. That's what I'm really good at. Now, If you're no longer being innovative and creative with your products or your business strategies or whatever you're coming up with, it is time for a change. A lot of us love innovation and creativity and have need an outlet for that. So if you have lost your sense of creativity and um, passion and inspiration in your business, it's time for a break. It's time for a change. If you are bored and unchallenged, it's time for a change. If there's nothing left to learn, if you have actually mastered your niche and you know most of what there is to learn and know about your niche, that's a sad place to be. If we're not learning, we're not growing. A change is different than quitting. Change pivoting, moving on requires a deep evaluation of what's really important. Circling back to what we talked about in the beginning, a health scare, a traumatic event, a death in the family, a car accident, something that literally turns your world upside down and shakes everything out of it. A divorce, uh, a job change, a, you know, something that moves you clear across the country or a war or political unrest, whatever is going on in your world that could turn it upside down and shake everything out. It's a deep evaluation of what's truly important. And that kind of change and that kind of moving on and reevaluation requires looking into the future and seeing what do you really want. Now, this is a big struggle for me. Um, I have a hard time. Like some people are very future oriented and they look at five and 10, 10 years, I want this. And in five years, I want this. And I struggle with that long-term plan or that long-term vision only because everything is always changing. So I can do a two or a three year idea or projection of what I think I want, but things change so quickly that I know what I want in a couple of years. But in 10 years, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to feel. I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know what my children are going to be doing. I have no idea. So it's really hard for me to look at that. But 
looking into the future, I know what I don't want. And you can start there. Chaos. Stress. Financial problems. Health problems. Those are things I don't want. So I can operate from there first. If you can't figure out what you do want, but you know what you don't want, that is still a starting place. And change and pivoting and moving on also requires determination to move through the difficult parts. Because y'all, if you heard nothing else and up until right now, lean in, turn it up, get your pen, get your paper, get your something, or just bookmark this and listen. If you are quitting because things are hard right now in this business, you're going to continue that pattern. Change requires determination to move through the difficult parts. And that determination comes from a clear vision of what you want or a clear vision of what you don't want. A lot of times we will work harder to avoid the pain or loss as opposed to working some for something we want. The determination to move through hard things and difficult things comes from a place of desire to either avoid something, like for me, for example, I've been through a home foreclosure, a devastating, heart-wrenching process. And I never want that again, never. So I will work very hard to avoid that as opposed to working really hard to say, get a million dollar mansion, which by the way, I don't want because that's just way too much square footage to clean and I don't love cleaning. So I want to clean as little as possible. (laughs) So you see the idea there is that I will work harder to avoid the foreclosure situation than I will working towards something I've never even experienced yet. Right? And I think that's a lot of natural human behavior. Avoid pain at all costs, right? But we have to have the determination to move through the difficult parts or all we will do is leave a wake behind us of a lot of stuff we quit and gave up on. That was too hard. That was too hard. That was too hard. Y'all, life is hard. Change is hard. Staying stuck is hard. Which hard do you want to avoid more? Which hard? Choose the hard That will lead you to what you truly want. Because staying stuck is hard. Changing is hard. Choosing the hard that will lead you to what you really want is super, super important. And so it's like, okay, now it's time to take that break. It's time to make an appointment with yourself. We are on a break, right? Because y'all, being busy is not a badge of honor. It's not. You can rock in a rocking chair all day long and it will keep you busy and it will keep you moving, but you aren't getting anywhere. Challenging you right now to look at your business. Look at what you do from day to day. Are you in a rocking chair? Are you moving, but not getting anywhere? Doing tasks, staying busy, but not actually getting where you want to go? It's high time we make that appointment with ourselves to reevaluate what our passions and priorities are. It's time. Just like we would make a physical appointment, talked about this already, going to the doctor because you have your headaches or, you know, your foot hurts or you can't walk or, you know, like recently I've had some major, major um, tingling issues and I've had to go get that evaluated because I can't function without it. Well, guess what? You can't function in your business without a clear mindset. So it's time to have an evaluation with yourself. Now, there's actually a how-to to to do this, right? It's in my book, Dream Big, Step Small. It's called In a Perfect World. Now we know there's no such thing as a perfect world, but if you could create one for yourself, your perfect day, your perfect business, your perfect relationship, whatever it is, create it. Dream about it. Think about it. Make an appointment with yourself to reevaluate that you're on a break. (laughs) You're on a break. Even if that break is only an hour, you're on a break because you need one, because you need to reevaluate what is most important to you and are your actions 
lining up with your priorities? Do your activities and tasks line up with your passion and your priorities? Do you even know what your priorities are in your life, in your business? What comes first? And did you know that no one else should be allowed to dictate that except you? Your mother-in-law doesn't get a say-so in your priorities. Your boss does not get a say-so in your priorities. Only you can do that. Now, we let a lot of things influence our priorities, and that's something that we can all work through and move forward on. But yes, there are definitely people and things. I can't, I'm a wife and a mom. I can't just do whatever I want whenever I want. I have bills to pay, so I do need to bring in an income. So yes, there are definitely life priorities that we all have. But in the end, we choose what goes on our calendar and on our schedule. So get, first of all, go to Amazon or to uh, my website, you can a personal signed copy of my book, Dream Big, Step Small, and we'll send to you. And in chapter three, you can have your own evaluation. You're in a perfect world. I walk you through the steps of exactly how to create your in a perfect world. And there's a huge gap probably between where you are right now and where you would love to be. And all it does is give you one or two small steps to get closer to that. This is an emotional evaluation. It is a priority evaluation. It is a passion evaluation. Do your actions line up with your priorities, your current actions? The answer is no. It's time for a change. Sometimes when we do this, we rediscover our passion that we lost. And this recently is what happened to me with the health scare and all of the different heaviness and stresses that have been coming at me in all different angles for all kinds of different reasons inside and outside of business. I got lost in the weeds of the business. I lost my passion for creating and helping because I was so lost in the weeds of just the tasks. And sometimes when we do this evaluation, we come to the conclusion that what we're doing is no longer something we care about. Did you know that you can care about something for a long time and then not? Something happens, something triggers, something goes on, or you just learn, you just decide that you care about different things. I care about different things now than what I cared about when I was 20. And rightfully so. (laughs) Give yourself permission to be in the season that you're in. Life has a lot of seasons. We have births, we have deaths, we have children, we have marriages, we have uh, high school and college and careers and retirement and uh, aging parents and deaths in the family and cross-country moves and illness and cancer and death and whatever, right? Sometimes we come to the conclusion that what we are doing now, we just don't care about anymore. And guess what? That's fine. It's perfectly acceptable. So for anyone out there that's been struggling, that's been wanting to make a change and doing something else, but feared feeling like they're a quitter or feeling like they're throwing in the towel, do you care anymore about this? Does this excite you? If not, reevaluate. Are you just lost in the weeds and you need a few small tweaks that can make all the difference? Because that's what I realized. I realized I don't want to quit. I don't want to give up on this. I just have some things that are driving me crazy. And I need a solution. I don't need an escape. I don't need to run away. I just need a break so that I can come up with the next solution. I need to change a few things. I'm no longer passionate about certain products that I've brought to the table. And so I'm done with them. I'm done creating them. Don't care anymore. I care about new things, different things. But I was hanging on to these other things out of guilt or some sort of obligation that I put on myself. And I was like, I'm not married to this inventory. I'm not married to this niche. What I realized is that I love to recreate, to create and discover new things. And there's a place in my business for that. It's called creating bundles on a regular basis. And so what I realized what reignited my passion was 
completely opposite niche than I was in. That's all the change that I needed. I didn't need to, I don't need to quit. I don't need to give up my Amazon store and move on to something else. What I really just needed was a break, a break to reevaluate what I care about and what I don't. Life is really just too short to do something that's uninspiring and unmotivated and boring. Make sure, do this evaluation, make sure that your, your reason, your why, your passion is still the same. And if it's not, give your, yourself permission to do something different. But by no means does that give you permission to quit because things are difficult. Because in your new adventure, if you decide to quit this one and go into a new adventure, guess what? The hardships are going to be there because you're going to be a beginner again. And beginners need have constant challenge. You have to constantly grow. If your reason or purpose has shifted, that's okay. Be aware of it. And then figure out what's going to serve you in that. Making change is hard without a plan. If you realize that you need a change, whether that's by force or by choice, it's hard without a plan. You need accountability, mentorship, coaching, education, training. Whether it's pursuing the next level of where you're at or something completely different, we all need that. How are you being accountable? Who is your mentor? Who is encouraging you? Who is giving you the slug and the hug, right? Someone's telling you, knock that off. And here, I'm going to give you a hug at the same time. Who's coaching you? Who's educating you? Everything in life is temporary. And life is really too short to stay with something that doesn't serve you anymore or that isn't working you don't enjoy it, don't do it. It's not quitting if you're moving on. It's actually growth, personal growth. The caterpillar isn't a quitter. The caterpillar transforms to a butterfly, right? Change is different. Change is hard. But so is staying stuck and miserable and stressed and worried and concerned. If we operate out of those emotions and those vibes, that's going to follow us into our business. This is your permission to be on a break, to take a break, to make a transition and a change from something that's no longer serving you. To reevaluate what you care about, what's important to you now. Because even if you started your business six months ago or a year ago, change happens. What do you care about now? What will you continue to care about, regardless of how the world spins and what happens here and there? What will you always care about? It's time to take a break, even if it's a brief one hour break and you spend it in Dream Big, Step Small, reading chapter three and developing your in a perfect world. It's time to take a break, to reevaluate what you love and what you want most from your life and from your business. Because honestly, what I realized when I took my break, I can make money doing almost anything. I'm kind of a hustler. I kind of been like that since I was a little kid. I'm frugal and I'm kind of a hustler and I I can, I can literally just like make money out of anything. I can make a business out of anything. It's like, oh, you love cooking? Um, you can be, there's so many different opportunities. Like literally can't turn my brain off from that. And that's what I realized I love and wanted most. I want to be able to be creative and have a million ideas and have some of them be fizzled out and some of them um, see come to fruition. I realized I love you guys. I love helping and encouraging and motivating and inspiring and giving strategies and problem solving 
to the degree of watching other people succeed. That is just what I love and what I'm going to do forever because it makes me happy. It inspires me and motivates me. And that's what I love. So what's that for you? Because if it's not what you're doing now, it's time for a change. And yes, that's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying to think that, what do you mean? If I'm not doing what I love now, um, then I have to make a change and I have to lay everything down and start over uh, all the things, right? That starts to become scary and hard. And when things are scary and hard, we just want to stay put because at least where we're at now is familiar. Even if it's yucky, it's familiar. It's not unknown. It's not unknown. It's known. It's known pain. It's, it's a ugly sort of comfort that we have when we're staying where we're at. Because change is difficult because we can't always see the other side. I'm just challenging you now. If you lost your sense of passion, if you lost your sense of creativity and inspiration and motivation, and it's really just about money and keeping the wheels turning, it's time for a break. We are on a break. Friends style, Ross and Rachel style break. Yep. Take that break and give yourself permission to dream and hope and be inspired and be mad and be frustrated. I journal a lot. I write a lot of all the yuck because once it comes out, then it, it's free. When it's trapped in your head. It's like a prison. Let it out. Look at it for what it really is. Don't judge it. Don't judge yourself for feeling bad or having negative feelings or feeling stressed out. Just accept it. This is how I feel and where I am. What can I do to make a change? Because I don't want this. I really hope that this is a slug and a hug for you. A little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a love, a little bit of permission, but a little bit of... Um, just motivation to really look and the permission that some of us really need to give ourselves to make a change to slow down to take a break to decide is this still serving me is this still something i want to do because that's also the beauty about entrepreneurship is that you don't have to stay and play on the playground that you're playing right now there's lots of playgrounds but is it a change or is it quitting? Make sure that whatever you do, there's no regret. Have peace with whatever decision that you need to make. And if it takes a longer break for you to figure that out, so be it. So be it. Y'all, I know you could be listening to any other thing at any other time right now. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. Thank you for trusting me with your time. I'm here for you. And if you are in a stage where you're not sure what your next move is and you're ready for a change or you're not even sure you're ready for a change, my coaching calendar opens in September. I'd be happy to talk with you and work out strategies that will get you to a place where you're in your zone of genius, where you're doing what you love and you're making money doing what you love and you're passionate about it and you can't wait for Monday because you can't wait to get back to doing the thing that lights your soul on fire. Right? Is that what you want? I'm happy to help. Mommyincome.com forward slash coaching. Find a spot on my calendar. And let's talk about your in a perfect world and what it's going to take to get you closer to that. Get the book, Dream Big, Step Small, on my website, on Amazon, Audible, all the places you can buy books, and dig in to chapter three. Build your in a perfect world. It's not going to be wasted time. It's not wasted time. Worry is wasted time. Gets you nowhere. It's like that rocking chair. But an appointment with yourself to reevaluate what you want and where you want to go never wasted time. Thank you for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.